PowerPoint has a variety of techniques to help focus your audience's attention to specific parts of your presentation. One of the coolest techniques is the use of the morph transition combined with Slide Master and Image Recolor to create a sophisticated visual enhancement. Let's preview the two projects that we will build in this tutorial. One example is an explainer presentation focusing on specific carpentry tools, while the second presentation focuses on specific data sets of a business graph, 12 slides in total. Starting with the hardware tools, the combination of stacked photos, one black and white, with the second duplicated color version lets us focus our audience attention on different tools. And on the business graph, we're able to do the exact same thing, but now focusing on the categories one, two, three, and four. These are really simple to build once you understand the concepts. This is Les from Power of Training with a quick Power Pro tip. So let's go. I'm working in the latest version of PowerPoint Office 365 on a Windows PC, but it works just as well on an Apple Mac OS computer. At a minimum, you do need to be on at least PowerPoint 2019, which is when the Morph Transition tool was introduced. As you can see, we're starting with a basic blank presentation. And for my second slide, I've changed the layout to a blank slide just so that we have an empty canvas to work with, but that's not required. Let's look at the steps before we get started. For the first phase, we'll bring in our foundation image and get it to fit on the slide. This works best with a colorful graphic. Next, we want to lock down the image inside the Slide Master tool and then recolor it to black and white. Then we'll add a new slide with the black and white version, followed by copying the full color version on the top layer, completely hiding the black and white bottom layer. And the final two steps are to crop down the color photo, revealing the monochrome back layer and applying the morph transition effect. So to get started, I'm gonna bring in a stock photo of a colorful set of hardware tools using Microsoft 365 Photo Gallery. While any image will work, I find that a colorful graphic is best to create the needed contrast. Once the graphic is dropped in, you will most often find that it does not match the dimensions of your slide canvas, or more specifically, the aspect ratio of the height and width. See the white space on both the left and right side of our image? So, what is the aspect ratio of our Canvas workspace? If you go to the Design Rib menu and then click the Slide Size, you will see the default layout for PowerPoint is widescreen, which is 16 wide by 9 units high. We'll need to crop our image to match and fill our workspace to 16 by 9. With our image selected, we can then click the Picture Format Context-Aware menu to uncover the Crop tool. Click the drop-down arrow and we see the expanded Crop menu choices. And there we can select Aspect Ratio and our 16 by 9. This does mean that PowerPoint will cut out extra parts of the photo to make it conform to the required aspect ratio. You may lose part of the image, in our case, the top and bottom. Pay close attention to the Crop tool. It is still active, as indicated by the gray highlighting of the Crop tool and the black angle bracket grab bars. To fill the full slide, we need to grab one of the angle brackets and stretch it to the corner, and then again to the other corner. Pay close attention as when you hit the right spot on the slide edge, the boundary will change colors in our tutorial from black to red. This means that we fitted the corner with the slide of our target crop. But there's still one last step as the crop tool is still active. To complete the crop, we need to go back to the drop down menu and select Fill for the photo to completely fill with the cropping action. Well, not quite finished yet. The cropping tool is still active. And we now have the option to move the photo up and down to determine which part of the image will actually get cropped out. To complete the full cropping set of actions, we need to indicate that we're done. One method is just to click outside the whole canvas area and the crop tool then deactivates and changes back to the normal menu colors. 
And in this case, since the picture is no longer selected, the full picture menu and crop menus disappear. Okay, the hard prep work is done. Let's select our newly cropped image by performing a copy all, making sure not to move the image location. Do this by selecting all with the Control A for Windows or the Command plus A on the Mac. With the slide in our clipboard, we can move on to the next step. Until Microsoft implements the rumored locked object command, we need to solve the issue of the background image shifting around on us. So to lock it down, we will employ the master slide tool. If this is new to you, then follow the steps, or if you wanna know more, go to our tutorial listed above. For now, let's switch to the master slide by going to view on the ribbon menu and selecting master slide. The master slide view reveals all the applicable layouts that are tied to our presentation. Layouts are like the title slide or the two contents layouts and all the settings for the layouts are applied to the various actual slides in the presentation. What we wanna do is to create a new layout that holds our image as the background, and once used, that image is locked in place and can't shift around on us going forward. So let's click Insert Layout to create our background layout, and then in this new layout, we're gonna do another Select All, and delete to get rid of all the text placeholders. Next, we'll then paste in our image from our clipboard, either with the keyboard shortcut keys or by going to home and paste. So to illustrate what we just did, let's exit out of the slide master view by going to the slide master ribbon menu and click close master view. This puts us back in our presentation. And look how on our original slide number two, I can easily mess up the slide by accidentally clicking on the picture and dragging the image off the edges of our slide. To avoid this, we want to use our new master slide layout. So I will create a new slide by right mouse clicking and choosing new slide. And then with the slide selected, I'm going to go up to the home ribbon menu and select layout. We'll find our image layout that we just created. Click and bingo, the image is there. And since the image is locked to the master slide, I can no longer select it and accidentally move it with my mouse. It's locked. Now let's go back to the slide master view and recolor our image. Once we change the view to slide master, we can select our new layout. And once this new layout, we can click on the image, careful not to move it as we are in edit mode, and then go to picture format and we can alter the image. While there are many choices you can experiment with, I'm going to select monochrome, a faded look for our background image. And when we exit out of Slide Master view, we see the magic of Slide Master, as all the attached slides, one in this case, will be updated with the new background and it still can't be moved around. On to the next step, which is pasting our colorful image as a layer on top. So I'm going to go up to the image above. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to go down to our new slide and I'm going to go ahead and paste it and it's going to cover up the background. Going forward, be very careful not to move the foreground color image as alignment is critical for this effect. If you do move it accidentally, quickly issue an undo command. Now to step seven, adding a crop to our color image to highlight just one area of our image. We select the image and then click Picture Format Menu, the drop down Crop Menu, and select Crop to Shape. Here, choose whatever shape you wish. I'm going to select a rectangle with rounded corners. I now need to go back and activate the Crop command. And I can now grab the corners, be careful not to move the image, and drag the crop handle so that I can highlight just the hammer. As I move the crop, we reveal the monochrome image that is lying in the background. And once again, to indicate to PowerPoint that I've completed my crop command, I need to click outside the image, making sure once again, not to move anything inside our contents. Let's quickly review the progress of our work by running a slideshow, where we go from the title slide to our full color slide, and then finally, just our highlighted hammer appears. Now let's go back and add a label by way of inserting word art, 
putting in the word hammer, and then choosing one of the preset shape styles. However, to add the classy cinematic look to our slideshow, we need to use the magical slide transition called Morph, which is easy to put in place. Go to Transition, choose Morph, and apply to the slide. Now watch carefully in the slideshow as we move from the color slide to the highlighted slide with the zooming effect to focus in on the hammer and the text label fading in. Next slide, just duplicate it, either by right-clicking and duplicating or going up and copying and pasting. Then you need to relocate the crop. However, be careful, do not move the crop as it's moving the color image. Instead, we're going to have to go back to the picture format menu and choose the crop tool. Once the crop tool is activated, the dark black grab handles appear, and now we can slide the crop window to highlight our new area of our image. In this case here, we want to surround our tape measure by moving both the top and bottom corners around. Then we're going to go ahead and grab the label, change it from hammer to tape measure, and put it in the right new location. As we run the slideshow again, we want to focus on not just at how the focus zooms in on the hammer, but when we move on to the next page, it's going to slide the focus over to our tape measure and then reappear the new label. Once again, cool. Okay, we can now rock and roll. I'm going to speed this up, but basically it's duplicate the slide and relocate the crop focus and repeat, including changing the labels. As I zip through these slide creations, I do want to slow back up for the flashlight and show what happens if we change the crop shape. Basically, we go back up to the crop tool and we change the shape to get a new window into our color background. We can then resize it. And what we want to emphasize is not just changing the shape, but how it impacts the morph tool. Let's take a look in slideshow. As we go through our six page slideshow, we see the rectangles change shape as it moves from location to location to location. But watch as we go to the flashlight, it's going to shift shapes to give us a new look as we move across. Pretty cool. That completes our first project. So let's fly through the business graph project, but at hyperspeed, with me pausing along the way for a couple finer points when not using a picture. Let me create a basic PowerPoint generic graph, give me a title, a color background, and a few extra visual enhancements. And here's my first pro tip. Do not copy this slide as your background as the image will not look sharp enough. Instead, save the single slide as a PNG graphic file, and you'll be able to use that as your colorful background on your slide master. Now on to creating a new layout by moving into the slide master view and then inserting an image, which is the PNG chart picture file that we just saved. Note that this picture file will not have to be resized as it was created off the same wide format that PowerPoint default is. Next, we recolor our color slide to give it a monochrome look. So that's going to be our background. Then back into the presentation view where we'll create a new slide and apply our newly created slide master layout, and then insert the color graph image file as our top layer. To add our spotlight emphasis highlight, I'm going to choose the oval as our cutout shape, but we can add some extra class by using one of the picture style formats to bring a little more emphasis. This particular style adds a dark border and a shadow underneath, really separating the color emphasis from the monochrome background. And before I start to duplicate it, I do want to go in and make sure I go to transitions and add morph to the style so that it too gets copied with each slide. Now it's just duplicating the slide. Look at this new technique. If instead of resizing the crop area, which we did earlier, if I am very, very, very careful, I can put my cursor on the exact border of the crop and move the crop and not the color image. This makes things go very smoothly. But once again, if you accidentally move the color image itself, make sure you undo so that you don't mess up the effect. 
and the final slideshow of our spotlight emphasis for business data. I really like how the highlight and shadow moves across the screen. That's it. If this was helpful. Do give us a thumbs up on YouTube and do subscribe to the Power Up Training YouTube channel. Until next time, go power up.